you're struggling to get your dried chilies, I use the Cool Chili Company online. Check them out. Okay, guys, this is my recipe for birria tacos. I absolutely adore these, and I hope you will too. Let's get to it. Don't forget, before we do, all the ingredient list and everything like that is in the description below. There's a link there to the website, and you can print it off, and away you go. Okay, so first things that we are going to do is make the spice paste for the birria, and we're going to de-seed all our dried chili. So every single chili, de-seed and tear up. Once you've de-seeded and took the stems off your chili de arbos and your guajillo chilies, we're going to get them in a dry pan to toast with some cumin seeds. We're going to toast them off for about two or three minutes. You'll know because you'll start to get all the aromas from the seeds and the skins. Cover that with water and leave to steam with the heat off for about 15 minutes. We're then going to add that to our food mixer in with the oregano, the garlic, some of your dried clove. And also we're going to get in our chipotles in uh, adobo sauce. Add in some adobo sauce to add a little bit of spice, a full onion, and then top that up with water till everything's covered. Blitz that for about three minutes. We want it as smooth as possible. About halfway through blitzing it, check for seasoning and add, if needed, added some salt and pepper. And then we're going to get a really nice, smooth consistency. From there, we're on to our meat. You can use any kind of beef you want here. I'm using beef chuck, but brisket works really well. Short rib is amazing, but I'm using chuck and then all i'm going to do is salt it really well and then i'm going to coat the bottom of my large dutch oven or large lidded pan with oil and we're going to get all our meat in there the idea here is to get as much color on the meat as possible we want to get a nice brown in color color equals flavor so that's what we're going for so be patient with this if you've got a lot of meat you can do it in batches i just have enough here to get a nice color on the meat from there we're going to add in a full tin of chopped tomatoes and our birria sauce I'm going in with a stick of cinnamon, some bay leaves, another full onion, some black peppercorns, and I'm going to give that a really good mix through. Make sure everything's fully coated, and then we are good to go. I'm also adding in a little bit of rich beef stock here. It's entirely optional. You can just use water. I just add beef stock. I really like the depth of flavour it gives, and it's also handy to have if your liquid inside during the cook starts to get a little bit too low. I'm going to get it to a rolling boil like this here and then we're going to whack that in the oven about 160, 170 degrees C for three to four hours. The idea is to get the meat so it's fork tender. You can see here it's just crumbling as soon as I sort of pinch it between my fingers. Remove all the meat from the sauce. Being very careful here, you don't want to squeeze it too hard with the tongs. I'm using a spoon just to help, just in case anything drops, because it will start to fall apart as you're taking it out. So make sure you get every last bit of meat and set the sauce aside. Now we're going to get in there, you can either use two forks or use your hands like me. Be careful if you're using your hands, it is going to be hot. You could let it cool if it's easier, but basically you just want to make sure it's all thoroughly shredded like this. Now we're on to the consomme. So with the birria mix, we're going to get that through a strainer and push everything through. We want as much liquid out of it as possible. You'll be left with a paste which you can discard, but you want a luscious, smooth, creamy sauce like this. I'm also going to add two ladles fulls of this consomme into the meat. What this will do is, it'll, as well as adding a load of flavour to the shredded meat, it'll keep it moist, and that's what we want. We want the nice, moist, melt-in-your-mouth meat when we make the tacos. So I'm covering mine now, and I'm going to pop that in the fridge overnight. You want to do this for at least two hours. If you're cooking this all on the same day, it's fine, but try and let it just sit for about two hours. That let, lets all the flavours in there get to know each other and have a little bit of a party. Okay, it's time to build. Best thing to do is get prepped, have everything to hand so you're ready to go. And that's it, guys. Let's do it. First thing we are going to do is we're going to get our corn tortilla. Please use a corn tortilla over a flour. The difference is huge and you will not regret it. We're going to dip that in the consomme and get that straight into a hot pan. On top of that, we're going to go on with our meat mixture. And then we're going to go on with some cheese. Uh, you can use Mexican cheese, which is what you use traditionally, but it's really hard to get hold of here in the UK, especially where I live. So I'm using uh, mozzarella, pizza mozzarella to be uh, precise. It's not the wet stuff. It's the nice sort of dried version. It's really, really nice. I'm also going in with some finely diced onions, coriander and some diced tomato. You can put whatever you want on it. These are just the toppings that me and my family like, but you can go crazy. It's kind of traditional, maybe not with the tomatoes as much, but you know, trying to get our five a day. So that's what we went with. And you're just going to repeat the process. Keep making these tacos. Don't be tempted to overload the tacos because you'll struggle to get them folded. But once you fold them, you want to toast each side, get a nice bit of colour on the corn tortillas, melt the cheese, and then just stack them. As far as cooking loads of them on a small pan like I'm doing here, you don't have to worry about temperature 
and them going too cold for people to eat. They'll stay warm for uh, an astonishingly long time. So yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Obviously, if you have a bigger pan, you can cook more than once. Or if you've got like a flat top griddle, you can cook many, many all at the same time. That's going to be the most economical way to do it. As you can see here, this is just showing a close up of the tacos that have soaked up that lovely birria oil crisping up in the pan. These are truly amazing. You just cannot knock them at all. This green sauce here, this green salsa, which I made from tomatillos. If you're interested in this green sauce and making it for yourself, do check out my other video. I'll link it below. But other than that, that's it. That's my Viria Tacos, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Do all the usual stuff. It really does help. Like, share, subscribe, and all that stuff. I'll see you in the next video.